going on guys it is uh, six in the morning and I am in Washington <laughs> I'm in Washington DC and I'm gonna head to the Capitol building which is just down there I don't know if you can see it a little bit of morning blue hour photography coming up So much like a lot of the locations I've been photographing on this trip from Phoenix across to uh, to New York City, I'm winging this. <laughs> I've never been here before, and uh, I have no idea what I'm shooting, where, which location, or what angle, or what I want to do. But last night when we got in, I opened up Google Maps, and I just went and used Street View, and I looked around at a bunch of different spots. And one of the things I look for when I'm photographing a location that I've never been to before is water. I like water because it gives me a reflection. It gives me something to put in the foreground. I'm always looking for water in my photos. And according to the map, there's some water right there. And according to reality, I'm on the wrong side of the road. So I'm gonna walk over to this water and probably use this to set up my shot. Hopefully maybe get some reflection of the Capitol building and who knows, hopefully this turns out pretty well. This is just perfect. You've got this beautiful, beautiful reflection and the blue hour light this morning is just fantastic. Lots of purples, lots of blues, and yeah, this is coming out really well. I wanna talk about what I'm doing really quick. I've got the 16 to 35 millimeter lens on and that actually ha was not at all what I was planning on doing when I got here. I was gonna go tight on the building, maybe 50 millimeters or 70 millimeters and really fill the frame, but the clouds are so interesting today and there's such a, like, a nice contrast within them that I've decided to go really, really wide. I'm like almost 16 millimeters. And I'm actually doing one minute and two minute exposures and getting motion in the clouds. Back in Savannah, I talked about how a shorter exposure for certain clouds is better and stops the sky from looking whitewashed. In a situation like this where the clouds are really moving quick and there's a lot of separation in them, it can actually create movement in your image that's otherwise standing still and create almost like a time warp effect. And it's coming out really cool. An exposure just finished. And yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure how I feel about the really, really wide angle, but it looks cool. Um, the setup is just simple. It's just a two-stop soft grad ND because it's a little bit brighter in the sky than the ground. Uh, and yeah, let's keep shooting. You guys ask quite a bit how I get the images so sharp. And I'm gonna tell you it's not anything fancy or anything special. It's like almost like a little bit of a formula to make sure that the image is as sharp as possible. So how do I get the images sharp? There's really like four things that you need to do. One is have a really, really good tripod. A lot of people I see out in the field with these really flimsy tripods and then they kind of seem frustrated when they can't get the shot. Get a good tripod, that's the first thing you need. The rest is all in the camera. On the lens, shut off the image stabilization. Some lenses, if you're on image stabilization and the lens is still, it still creates a vibration and that can make your image less sharp. The next thing you need to do is turn the mirror lockup on on your camera. When your camera takes a picture, it's got a mirror so you can, unless you have a mirrorless camera, when you're looking through the viewfinder, you see two mirrors. One going that way, bouncing down that way, and then out through the lens so you can see what the camera sees through the lens. But when you take the picture, obviously the mirror has to be up so that the sensor can see what you're taking a picture of. And if you have the mirror down, when you press the shutter, it flips up. That's the snapping sound you hear in your camera. And when it does that, it can create shake in the camera and again, get a little less sharp images. And the last thing you need to do is set a timer. I always shoot a two second timer. Sometimes I even use a remote, but at least a two second timer. Shoot a two second timer because when you're pushing the shutter, 
on your camera, again, that can create just a little bit of shake, a little bit of movement. So do those things, you're gonna get sharp focus. When it comes to where I focus, in this situation with a long lens, it's pretty simple. I'm just focusing on the subject. When I had the wide angle lens on, again, in a situation like this, I'm just focusing on the building, focusing on the subject. On a landscape image, I might focus one third the way into the image if there's not an obvious subject, or I'm focusing on my anchor usually. So yeah, it's really that simple. Do those things, follow those formula, follow that formula, and you'll get sharp images. The light's gone a little bit bland after the blue hour. There tends to be like stages to light in a morning or sunset or anything. In the morning, you get this beautiful blue light early and then it kind of goes bland and gray usually for quite a while. And then right at sunrise, that's when you tend to get all that color and crazy sky. I don't think I'm going to get all that color and crazy sky this morning because apparently there's an incoming storm. There's a storm coming in from the east, supposed to hit in like maybe a half an hour here. And I think that's just gonna block off all the sunlight. In fact, if I'm looking at the sky right now, there's this cloud moving all this way. It's about to come right over top of the Capitol building and hopefully not rain on me. Um, but instead of shooting some photos, I think it's time for a little bit of time lapse. The sun's just come up and it's really trying hard to push through the clouds, the big clouds on the top, but it's just not happening. But there is some nice like fiery sky happening in the background. If that would pop through and these whole clouds would catch, that would be unreal. But it's just too much cloud this morning. It's just teasing at me this morning. And I think uh, it's probably time to pack up and head towards New York City. Delaware! Ready? Yeah. <laughs> we just made it to New York. I just dropped Jody off at her hotel and I'm going to explain quickly and I'm sorry it's probably loud in here, it's raining, what the plan is. Jody is here for Fashion Week and back when we figured out she had to go to Fashion Week, we kind of had this idea, oh why don't we drive to New York, it'll be fun but I had a flight leaving LA. So I thought to myself, this would be a crazy time for a crazy road trip, let's do it. So I'm gonna drive Jody all the way to New York and then drive all the way back to LA and do this crazy meetup thing. So Jody's here for three or four days, she's flying to the UK. I'm driving back to LA starting on the next episode and then I'm flying to the UK as well. I'm going to Wales for a couple days after that and then Jody and I are going to be reunited and we're heading to the Philippines. So Jody's gone for like four or five episodes um, but she'll be back and I think I'm actually going to end this vlog now because that epic meetup vlog thing is start, supposed to start today but it is like pouring rain here in New York City. So we'll see what happens. I guess um, you'll see what happened on the next episode. I'll see you guys there. Peace.